right now we're going to get a little bit of comic book action. I love comic books, and it has become a great thrill and privilege for me to get to know our next two guests. We've got Pia Guerra here, who is the co-creator of Why the Last Man, and we have Ian Boothby, who is the co-creator of Sparks and a brand new comic series called Extra Sisters. And we're going to find out. Come on up. I know there's a little bit high. That's Let's, okay. Uh, You're doing great. We're going to free solo this thing here. Here we go. See if you can climb all the way Absolutely up there. Absolutely no ropes. We're involved. There. Let's get <laughs> Now, Ian has actually been on the show before. You I were on, on last great. year when we were kind of learning how to make EP Live. Yes. And you were fantastic on oh, that. Thanks so much. No, it was, a, it was a real kick. A lot of people uh, saw it and went, hey, what's going on? Why are you on that? Uh, it confuses people in my family, especially when I'm on TV. Our show is uh, like that, though. Yeah. We, don't, we never know what's going to That's what makes it so fun to make this show. Yeah. We, we don't know what we're going to talk about next. Periodic table of elements. I know, right? We learn a little bit. That's Argon. Right. Uh, Which I always Argon? Was, yeah. It's just yeah. scientists that didn't know how to spell. Gold is not spelled A-U. That's all I'm saying. Okay. All right. Well, Ian, uh, let's start with you first, because sure. uh, we're going to dive right into why the last man, and it's going to take over the whole conversation. <laughs> no, but uh, when you were here last, Sparks was uh, the project that you were just sort of bringing out into the world. That's right. What happened with Sparks? Um, it, we, we had a very nice reaction with it. I did it with my friend Nina Matsumoto. She's the artist on it. Yep. My friend uh, David Edrick is the colorist. It's a story of uh, two cats that want to be heroes, but no one takes cats seriously. Uh, so they dress up as a dog and they save the world from an evil alien baby. <laughs> and it, uh, thanks. And, uh, and it became like a hit book in Canada for quite a few months. It was on the top 10 charts, what? which was a real thrill for us. Now we're working on the second one and the third one. It's an awesome book, and you, you. and you gave us the book. Uh, we went to your um, to the re release party that you right. had at, kids at a, books. At a, big, a bookstore, yeah. which was great. Oh, sorry, and you signed uh, <laughs> kids books. What's all right? I, and you signed it, and you gave uh, a copy to my daughter, and we've read that book. Uh, but the cool thing was that I started to see at my kids' elementary school that everybody was reading this, and I started to see kids walking down the street with the kind. I'm like, I know the guy that wrote that. <laughs> the weird thing for me has been I've I've gone to do school uh, talks, and then afterwards the kids always say what they want to see in the next book. Yeah. And so I mentioned that there's some time travel coming up and other things like that. And then uh, there was this the last time. Uh, all these kids wanted to see uh, the, uh, Sparks fight the Illuminati. Oh, nice. Yes. What? For some reason, they just wanted to <laughs> see... Elementary a, school kids yeah, wanted, wanted to see... Yeah, they wanted to see a glo <laughs> okay. the global uh, overlords uh, versus this uh, two little cats in a dog suit. Amazing. Yeah, kids they, today. They must be picking up the news or something I like that. So, in the yeah. house. Yeah. <laughs> Lizard people and such. <laughs> but that's great to hear. Uh, the, uh, the last time that we all hung out uh, as a trio mm -hmm. together was to see Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. So good. And... <laughs> Let's talk about that for a well, second. What did you think it was going to be? Like when you saw the trailer for it, did you think it was going to be as good as it was? No. No, me either. No. I, it looked a little choppy, the animation, yeah. when I saw it in the trailers. And I thought, okay, maybe they didn't finish it. I don't know. And I then, thought it was going to be a romp. Like yeah. A weird multi-universe romp with like cute cartoon kind of mix-ups. And then being, okay, there'll be some fun stuff in there. But that blew my mind. We were all crying. Yeah. Full disclosure, we we're all sitting yeah. there like there was nobody. It was a, a, a critics showing and I, I asked if you guys wanted to come as comic people and you did come yeah. and we we're the three comic nerds in the front just bawling just like, oh my God, I can't believe this movie. Well, regular people felt that same way. I know. Who, who would have thought that it would have, uh, you know, uh, won the uh, Oscar? It's I mean, it, it deserved it, uh, of course. Something I like about it is like there's not really any swearing or anything in it. But it's one of the more mature yeah. uh, superhero movies. Yeah. Like it deals with the relationship between a kid and uh, finding himself and his parents in just such a deep, simple way. They make it. This is the thing Marvel does to me. Yeah. They make what seems to be impossible look easy. Yes. And then and then afterwards you're like, you're two Ant, uh, Ant Man movies deep. And you're like, how did you do that? Yes. That shouldn't work. I know. And this shouldn't work. We're so spoiled. Spider Ham shouldn't. Work. I know, right? And in any way, shape, or form, <laughs> Nick Cage. Uh, as a, a guy who lives in a film noir universe, shouldn't work and be touching. Yeah. But they are. I just love the dad, the cop dad say, yeah. on the radio saying, so you got to say it. You got to say it. Oh. It's the best. Yeah. What, what, a, what an amazing movie. Um, can we talk about what happened with you after that movie? Because there's, I, I uh, can you reveal I, uh, anything? Uh, I haven't got a contract down yet. Okay, okay. But uh, I got a gig lined up for this summer, which I'm very excited about, and we'll announce it more later. Okay, that's super cool. Well, let's talk about a gig that was quite a while ago now, mm -hmm. but still very important in your life, and there have been some new developments. We're talking about Why the Last Man. 
which is one of my co favorite comic series of Thank all you. time. It is absolutely spectacular. And every time I talk to people about uh, the medium of comics and whether they, you know, it, they might have some hesitations or they might not read them very much, I always say, have you read Why the Last Man? Have you read this book? And now it is a TV series. Yeah. Um, it, it was in uh, pre-development hell for about 10 years with New Line, yep. uh, and they couldn't figure out a way to turn it into a movie. They wanted just one movie, and every director to team that came on was like, no, we have to make three. Yeah. And the studio was saying, nope. And then they'd go, and then another director would come on, and another one, another one. And so it was like this for 10 years, and we are just like, okay, I guess it's just not going to get done. We'll see. But then the option uh, expired, and we had a bunch of studios interested, and we kind of looked at all... The people who were interested in what they they wanted to do with it, and FX the came best. up with had the best uh, setup. And they're a great network. They're wonderful. I love the shows that they do, and we're really excited about their their take on it. And they they started filming the pilot last fall, and we just got the green light for series. So they're going to start filming in the summer. Yeah, that is amazing. And. We happened to be in New York at the same time. Yes. I don't know. We were, I don't know. I, oh, was we the, had avocado toast. We had avocado <laughs> toast. Uh, we were there for NBA 2K19. Yeah. To sh they showed us the basketball game. But you were there to go and check out the yeah, set. It and was wonderful. It was so much fun. It was hot. There was this crazy heat wave that was mm -hmm. going on. Yes. We were there at like 10 o'clock at night. It was still like 90 degrees out. Yep. And this kid, Barry, I think it's Keegan or Keegan. I'm not sure how he spells his, or pronounce his last name yet. I'm very sorry. Is Barry. he Yorick? He's yes. your okay. and uh, we kind of we were led onto the set. Didn't know that there was actually shooting at them that second that we were came. We were just chatting with the PA, and when I look, and he just walks right on on set. Wow! And he's in the full cape, and he's in the gas mask, and the cape is horrendously heavy. It's like really like rubbery. Wow! And um, and he, they do they finish the take, and he's dying under this thing, but he's got so much energy. He's like, let's do it again, let's do it again, and he's so happy, and he's like. I love you. You're great. That, that and so is I'm amazing. I'm really, really excited for this kid. He's got wonderful energy for it. What was it like to see the character that you designed as was, a, as a real strange. human being? It was it was the same that it was like it was kind of like this mirrored thing because because afterwards Barry came up to us and he was like shaking my hand and he has a wonderful Irish accent so I'm, I probably won't shoot. That. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, it's like seeing God. And he's like, oh, thanks. It's like that same for me. This is awesome. So yeah, it was it was a really pleasant thing. That's and, awesome. Yeah. So you you were the artist on the book. Yeah. And for people that don't know, it's it's ten part or twelve part uh, of the trades. Oh, um, there's, that's depends, the, on the, depends on the type of trade. There's, okay. There's like a five book trade. There is okay. a 10 book trade. Well, it's now, a fun. The first sets of trades were 10 books. Then there was the deluxe soft covers, which were five books. And Got then you. the hard cover, same five. And then there's the absolute edition. Yeah. Oh, three. yes. Okay. So. But there was always this idea that it was a finite story. Yes. And you collaborated with uh, Brian K. Vaughn yep. as the writer. And you knew right away that there was a beginning, middle, and end yes. to this whole thing. So talk to me a little bit about crafting the work with Brian and, and like how far in advance did you get the scripts and was there a huge crushing deadline or were you able oh, to finish was, everything? Yeah, uh, well it started in 2002 and uh, the upper upper echelons of Vertigo did not believe that Brian had a 60 issue story in here yep. so they demanded that he write a bible for the entire run. Wow. So uh, I didn't read the exact bible but I had a rough outline of where it was going to go. Well, this was around the time when people were like I can remember Kevin Smith was writing Green Arrow around yeah. that and so like good there was writers. There genuine fear that there yes. was, these things weren't going They couldn't finish, finish their stuff. Yeah, they were going to just make it a four issue comic. Yeah well yeah that's right. The wow. editorial wanted it to be a four issue miniseries and oh, so wow. they had to prove like no there, this is a story worth telling in right. 60 issues. Right. And that was the nice thing because Brian is like this one of the, again, you'd mentioned he's a genius. He's a genius. Yes. Uh, well, that's clear, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. But, his, his, but his genius is that he listens to people. Cool. He doesn't doesn't have his like, this is his vision and he must get it out there. It's like, he wants to hear your input. He right. wants to add to it as you go along. Awesome. And uh, he's always open to, to me like giving ideas. And so it really became a co-creation and it was, it was, I've never worked on a book like that before. That's so cool. Yeah. So did then did he have all of the ideas in the scripts yeah, when he gave things, them to you? And things changed as yeah. it went. So what happened was how our, our collaboration worked was uh, before each story arc, uh, like five, four or five issues, uh, he would give me an outline of what was going to happen. Yeah. And I would read through it and I would offer an idea. So it would be like, well, maybe 335 should have a, a baton. Or maybe this one scene, he should have a bag over his head because it's a thing I read about the military. This will really work. And he's like, yeah, okay, cool. 
And so, it, so each each set of notes he would take, and he would either incorporate some or like, no, this doesn't fit. Uh, safe word. It was a three-issue arc. wasn't part of the original book. It was just a dumb idea I came up with one night. And I was like, how about this? And uh, then a few months later, he came back to me and was like, okay, remember that that idea you had? <laughs> I turned it into three issues. I managed to cram it in there. And I'm like, oh my god. That's awesome. So uh, it was it was just really great working with him for that. And I didn't know exactly how it ended because it was kind of vague about the specifics. So when we got to the final arc. And he and I, and I read what the outline was going to be because I was fighting for 355 the whole time. Yep. Mm-hmm. Not no spoilers, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, and so we were tr- trying to figure out a way to deal with her. And I had all these ideas and I really wanted to, to do this. And then I saw what was happening and like, oh damn you! And <laughs> it was beautiful. And I was like, okay, that's that's how it was. So it was, every script that came in was just as exciting for me to read too. It's going to be amazing to watch the show come together mm-hmm. because the. Uh, it's the last man. It's the last male. So it's going to be such a female-driven show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if we've ever seen a show like that before. And the producer is... The producer, yeah, we have uh, uh, well, Nina Matsukas was uh, one of the directors. We have... Uh, uh, Nina Jacobson. Nina Jacobson right from, on, yeah. Hung, uh, from Color Force. Mm-hmm. There was, there's uh, another woman... Uh, Cruel, Ida Cruel, she's mm. amazing. Cool. Uh, so we, female directors yeah. and producers. Yeah. And, and we also Michael Green, who's off of uh, American Gods, working on the script. And I read an early draft, and it was just gorgeous. Awesome. Are they going to deviate a lot from the yeah, comic? Yes. Well, yeah. It's, it, there's going to be changes, but it, like there's elements that are still really, really close to it. Yeah. But there, I think there are the elements that are changes really work because so they put a lot of dudes into this. No, <laughs> well, that's maybe in the pilot, but after that, no. no. Okay. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but what they're doing goes to Hollywood. We need some love stories and some dudes. I know, and the, <laughs> but I don't think that's what's going to happen. Okay, good. I think they're true to that. But what they are doing is if, is incorporating uh, current events, things like the Me Too movement, Black Lives Matter, things wow. that are relevant to yes. now that you'd have to incorporate in there. Totally. Uh, yeah. We were we had some notes from the first draft saying, okay, there's not enough Trump in this. You have to, you know, deal with this because yes. this is so prevalent right now. Yes. And I think uh, I read that Michael Green kind of took our notes. And he's like, yeah, we have to figure this out. And he took a long, hard look at how to how to fix it. I don't know what the what the final draft looks like. Oh my we're, God, we're I can't all wait. We're going to be surprised. Does it come out this year, or is it? Uh... I think it's maybe later this year. They start filming the the second episode on uh, in summer, so it's probably going to be ready for either the fall or the new year. Crazy. I seem to recall there was something in the news about uh, maybe it was this was just a UK thing, but there was some fertility issue and this, the sperm count was down. I don't know if you heard anything about that. Uh, I, I think that's been a thing that's been talked about for a long time because they were predicting that would happen just because of of pollution levels and things were affecting uh, things like that. So, so do, does Brian feel like an even bigger super genius? <laughs> <laughs> he's I, he's time, predicting yeah, all this stuff. Every time someone brought up cloning during the run, we're like, oh God, oh God. <laughs> 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 Yeah, crazy. Oh, man, I can't wait. Congratulations Thank on you. that, because I know this has been a long run for you, oh, yes. uh, you know, just hoping that something like this would happen yeah. in the right way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just really excited. I, I, I want to see what other creatives do with this and see how they, they treat this world and have fun with it, and I'm, I'm all for it. Awesome. Now, Ian, you have a new comic series that has just launched, which is not a kid's book. But it is accessible. I, yeah. you know, when I'm reading it, there's a, you're such a funny dude. And there is definitely a great sense of humor in these two sisters that are uh, exorcists. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, Exorcist sisters. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's uh, you know what I'm going to do a little bit of a spoiler here, uh, where uh, you think that they're sisters, but actually uh, one of them is the other's soul, uh, and the mom sold uh, her soul to uh, you know protect herself uh, when she was 13, and she finally got her soul back when she was 18. Uh, but they were too different at that point. So one's kind of uptight because they've never. Uh, they kind of got rid of all their emotions when their soul was taken away. Right. And uh, one's kind of like kind of a rocker and, uh, you know, all, uh, you know, um, all angst and, and, and passion and eating everything and uh, just, uh, you know, uh, savoring life. Uh, and yeah, the two of them uh, saved the world from uh, all sorts of demons and such. It starts off with a uh, a groom that gets taken, sucked into into hell, and yeah. and the the bride is like, "What the hell?" and asks the exorcisters to come and save her groom. Yeah, right? after uh, one of them uh, eats most of the food and drinks all the champagne, that's right. <laughs> then they go to hell, and uh, we we see what happens. And and Giselle Legacy is just this amazing artist that I'm so lucky to work with. 
she did a um, web comic called uh, Menage uh, Three. Okay. Uh, that's a uh, very sexy threes company type uh, okay. <laughs> uh, comic. Uh, this is less of the sexy sexiness. Okay. But there's still some sexy sexiness in there. How do you pitch a comic like this? I know that you you guys are both veterans in the yep. comic industry, and you've worked on lots of different things, and you know lots of people out there, but. You know, it, it always takes convincing before people are ready to pony up money or marketing or whatever. So how do you pitch a, an idea like Extra Sisters and get the green light? Well, um, with, with Sparks, it was because Nina and I had worked on The Simpsons and Futurama comics for so long. Right. So we had that reputation. Giselle's reputation um, kind of preceded her. So I kind of rode those coattails oh, uh, in, nice. that, in, that, uh, in that situation. And now is Giselle based in Vancouver as well? No, she's uh, back east, eastern Canada. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, is there, we just had Vancouver Fan Expo yes. and you guys had tables and you met with people and, but is there a, a, a big local comic book creator scene? Yeah, and I do you mean, all get together? We might be shrinking a bit because of our of our rents. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I yeah. a lot of friends who are going to like Kelowna and then the, now to Halifax just to, to try and keep up with it. But yeah, uh, no, there's a huge there's a huge scene here. I mean, we um, yeah, just in our office building, it was yeah. like most of the people who worked on uh, Bongo comics, yeah. The Simpsons and Futurama comics, and uh, Johnny Christmas was also in our building. He was working with Margaret Atwood on on a book. It's yeah, it's, we, we have great uh, talent here in Vancouver when it comes to comics. We're very, very uh, lucky. That's awesome. Yeah. And are, are there events or workshops or things like that? that, you, that there are, you, uh, there are uh, jam sessions yeah, sometimes yeah. that uh, uh, cartoonists get together, but mostly we just meet each other at conventions. Yeah. And mostly, to be honest, we meet each other at conventions that are outside of Vancouver. Right. So I'm more likely to meet, I had a friend of mine, James Lloyd, who I worked with, and I was more likely to meet him in California or Europe than I would be to meet him across the hall from you know where I worked. That's hilarious. They're much more likely. I know what that's we just like. Don't have the time. Yeah. I, yeah. In our yeah, yeah. We totally. make our stuff, and then yeah. we. It's it's so funny. We would travel to Comic Con all the time for uh, for EP, and on the plane I would see all of the shows yep. that shoot here. I think and that's where we first met. Was in the line. That's right. The, yeah. Like because our line would kind of snake past each other. And so <laughs> yes. We were like, just like, hi, and then you know, like, so they could rack back around, like, oh, hi again. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> we have to make this a regular thing. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. One of the things that's cool about these two, you might have guessed, but they're, they know each other. There's a relationship here. These two, these two are married. And, oh, yeah, and, and, and you're a writer. Do you draw as well? Or? Yeah, I started off doing my own autobiographical comics in the 90s. And okay. that's how I kind of got involved with The Simpsons. Okay. And that's actually how I met you yeah. as well. At a local convention. That's right. And now we work together on uh, Mad Magazine mm -hmm. and uh, do cartoons together for The New Yorker. That's awesome. And so do you write your own stuff a little bit as well, too, right? I'm, yeah, I do write my own stories that I'm still working on. It's going to take forever, but it'll get done. Uh, but I also do editorial cartoons. That was just venting after the election, and then it became a side career. <laughs> and it's and it's been exploding for you. Yeah. Congratulations yeah, so on that. so many of them have gone viral. And uh, <laughs> there was one that she did with Steve Bannon that made Trump very upset <laughs> to the point where all the news uh, you know, uh, shows said that was the start of their breakup. Really? I, 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 I'm, it's a guess. She won't say I, it. I'm, she won't say it, but all the news shows say that. <laughs> so how so do she's you. She's responsible well, for getting the, him out it was of just, it. Because like, there was one more, like, there was Good Morning America. I just remember turning it on, and, and there was uh, George Stephanopoulos laughing at the cartoon. <laughs> wow. And saying, oh, he's not going to like that. That's and amazing. So that was, that felt good. That's amazing. <laughs> how is it to collaborate? I mean, you guys have. Are you cool with your yeah. couple? Some some couples, it's not so easy. We don't always work together because we like we, we worked on our own separate projects for a long yeah. time. But yeah. every now and then, we do something together and be really fun. And uh, it wasn't long enough that it, we got to each other's nerves on it, yeah. so that was good. The New Yorker stuff is is really fun because he'll go off another room, write a bunch of uh, of punchlines, and send it to me on Messenger. And then like I open it up and like. Okay, that one, that one, that one, I'll draw that one. And yeah, and then that's how we do it. That's awesome. That's awesome. One of the beautiful things about uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is that it's a, a celebration of comics, mm -hmm. right? In a, an era where comics are celebrated, but mostly just for their great ideas, and they take the ideas, thank you very much, we're going to make billions of dollars with these movies and TV shows. And they don't really ever reference the books too much, but... Spider-Verse really felt like it was coming off the page. Yeah. yeah, it was also a movie that made you want to read the comics afterwards. Yes. Which isn't necessarily the case. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you'll uh, go see a Batman movie and go, oh, I really love that. What do you got in the Batman comics? Nothing to do with that. Yeah. Done, <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, but there but was so much 
to yeah. select in there. So much to choose from. Well, and then uh, I don't know if you guys have read the, the news about this recently, but there was an article on one of the comic book sites that said that Marvel might drop out of the publishing business and that they were going to, and then... I think that was just one of those silly numbers. <laughs> they were just looking for that. that. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, well, Casada yeah. came out there yeah. and said, no way are we ever going to stop publishing yeah. comic books, yeah. which would be, he's the head of Marvel, he's the editor-in-chief of yeah, Marvel. So my question to you is, as two comic, long-time comic creators, why are they vital as a, as a medium of expression? Why do we need comics? Why do we need to read them and invest in them and believe in them? Okay, well, I think like with the Into the Spider-Verse, um, I, I, there's, a, there's a person I know who's, um, who's First Nations who said if she had seen that movie when she was a little girl, yeah. it would have changed her life. Right. Because the idea that, you know, you can wear the mask, anyone can wear the mask, anyone can fight the good fight, anyone can do their best and be their own unique version of a hero. Right. That's what that, that's what that says. And Spider-Man to me when I was growing up really did like kind of set a lot of my moral compass. It was like he was a guy, like Superman pretended to be a nerd. Spider-Man was a nerd. Yes. Spider-Man did the right thing and did not get rewarded. Spy uh, Superman did the right thing and got a parade every time. Right. And everyone loved him. Right. And it's and to me, what I liked about that was you still got to do the right thing, even if people aren't rewarding you for it. Yes. Do it. Do it for its own sake, and that that had a really big impact on me. Yeah. One of the greatest appeals of comics is that. Uh, it, it's an adventure, it's not just the power fantasy, mm -hmm. it's an adventure uh, from a kid's point of view of what adulthood could be and what, mm -hmm. it, you know, what it should be. Right. Um, and, you know, so much, it's like when you ever see a, a comics about kids, it doesn't really resonate as much. Yes. But it's, the kid who puts themselves in the place of these heroes and they get a chance to pretend or to kind of be the adult with with some agency in the world because kids don't have that. Yeah. They're told when to go to bed, when, what to eat for dinner and all this. They don't have a lot of power in their lives. Yeah. But here are these stories where they can dream about being an adult and fixing things, fixing the world, fixing the bad things that happen because that's what kids look for. They, they want some sense of like some that things are going to get better. Uh, yeah, yeah, so some of that hope and that right yeah. and wrong kind of side. I, I, I learned a lot do, of that too. Yeah, that's what I try to do with Sparks as well is it, there are very dark scenes in Sparks for like uh, for a kid's book, but I think it's important for kids to see things that are dark and go like, how do you deal with it when things go bad? Yeah, when things are sad. Yes, you know what do you what do you do? And uh, yeah, there was a friend of ours. Um, he's a writer who works in Australia, and he used mm. to do these these tours, uh, like school tours, talking about comics. And he did one on a reservation, like a, 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 like an indigenous reservation deep in the desert, like in, in Australia, in the mm -hmm. outback, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a school, and it's a lot of at-risk youth. And he sat down with them, and one of the wonderful things, this great story you would tell about how, you know, there was the big kid in, 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 in the room. Like, he was having a lot of troubles at home, and it was just really tough. He was him, different, But yeah. he was different. But he kind of impressed them, like, look, you're Superman. You're the one who gets to use that power of yours, that's that your size, your ability, mm. and your presence to help the little guy. Yeah. And th these kids kind of just opened up completely to this idea that they have they have some agency where they where they, they didn't think they had it before. Yeah, it felt like so, you had a purpose. Yeah. yeah, and comics do this for people. And you, you, so I just love his stories about talking to kids and telling like uh, finding out what it is about these characters that they can relate to, what they can learn from them, what they can bring into into their lives. That's from, awesome. And I guess one of the other great things about comics, too, is that it doesn't take $100 million to no. kind of manifest a, 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 an that's interesting idea. That's the idea. fun part. Yeah. You can create incredible worlds uh, with enormous budgets, and it's all just, it's, if you can draw it, it's there. Yeah. And yeah. you can do stick figures, and you can do very and basic things. you can things. do basically, too. Yeah, uh, you don't have to be Brian Hitch. That's yeah. great. All right, so you are comic creators, and you love the medium. Yes. And we've talked a lot about uh, all kinds of work that, that has been happening, but I'm curious about what you would recommend right now to anybody that uh, is looking for a great comic read. Why don't we start with you, Ian? Okay, well, if you're an adult, I'd say uh, Brian, uh, Brian K. Vaughan and uh, Fiona Staples' uh, comic Saga. Yeah. I think that's, that's a fantastic one. Uh, I think uh, if you're a younger, per I mean, I don't, I'm not spilling the beans to be saying read Smile, Clearly, if you're a kid, yep. uh, everyone's reading that. It's a, it's 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 fantastic. So, and Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, I I always like it's it's not running anymore, but you can find the books is uh, Fraction and Naja's uh, Hawkeye. Okay. It's my yeah. Oh, I love series. I that love was so it. good. Yes. Yeah, it was just it's beautifully done. 
And it's it's just a quirky story. I love it. I Map fraction it. rules. Yeah. He's yeah. so good. I know. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> And, and that works for kids or adults. Yes. So. That's right. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And, and, you know, that, that's. He's got a pizza dog. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing that pissed me off about Bill Maher, too. F that guy. But him talking about uh, <laughs> people crying about Stan Lee and how comic book heroes are. Anyways, I'm not I'm not drudging that back up again. Fair enough. Yes. I will. So yeah. I will know what <laughs> yeah. Nothing, nothing okay. makes a person more upset than not being relevant anymore. Uh, yes. Like, totally. Oh, very nice. It's, to me, it's always this. It's, 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 this is the thing I hear all the, all the time, which is like, I haven't changed. Everyone else has. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. You you got it right. You, yeah. You're right. That's the problem. Yeah. You're thinking like, oh no. You're thinking like, no. You should still be able to do the same thing forever. That's not how art works. No. That's not how anything works. That's you gotta right. Keep evolving and adjust to you know the world around you. And, and fortunately, I don't think he has. And clearly, people like comics and superheroes oh and gosh. escapism. And we are living in an oh, incredible age right now. Great huh? fight to pick. Yes. <laughs> All right, you two. Thank you so thank much you. for being with us. This is Pia Guerra and Ian Boothby. Thank you so much for being on EP Live.